Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to connect to a Cisco switch and do some basic configuration on the switch. Let's look at the steps that we're going to take in this video. At first we want to connect to the switch using a console cable. I'm going to show you what is a console cable. Then you are going to change the host name of the switch, which is the name of the switch. And then we want to create some VLANs to separate computers from each other logically. And we want also to assign some ports of the switch to the VLANs. I will explain more about VLANs in the next slide. And after that, we want to do inter-VLAN routing. So the computers that are in different VLANs can have access to each other. You can do this step if your switch is a layer 3 switch. If your switch is a layer 2 switch, you cannot do it using your switch. You have to do the inter-VLAN routing using a router. So you need a router beside your switch. But if your switch is a layer 3 switch, like my switch, you can do inter-VLAN routing on your switch. The switch I'm using is a Cisco 3850 switch. It has 24 ports and all of those ports are PoE ports. You can see here the port numbers here. It is port number 1, it is 2, this one is 3 and this one is 4. I also have a module here that it gives me for SFB and SFB+. Plus. This is the back of the switch. These are the fans and this is the power of the switch. We can have two powers for redundancy. I just have one power here and we have two ports here. This port here at the back of the switch is the console port and the other one is the management port. The one that we want to use is this one, the upper one, which is the console port. We use a console cable to connect to this port. The newer models of the console cables are like this one. You can see one side of the port is RJ45 and the other one is USB. But if you have one of these older models, like this one that we have here, you can see that the connector here is a DB9 connector. You can buy a converter like this that connects this one to a USB. Then you connect these two sides to each other. At the end, you will have something like this one. One side is USB and the other one is RJ45. Either one of these options is okay. And what we want to do is to create three VLANs. We are going to create VLAN 10. VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. These four ports will be in VLAN 10. We want to put them in VLAN 10. Then the next four ports, we want to put them in VLAN 20. And the next four ports, we want to put them in VLAN 30. When we put those ports in different VLANs, we should give them different subnets, different IP addresses. For example, for computers that are connected to these ports in VLAN 10, we might have some computers that are connected to the first four ports. We can put them in 192.168.10.0/24 subnet. For computers that are connected to these ports that are in VLAN 20, we can use 192.168.20.0/24. I set this one 20 just like the VLAN numbers, but you don't have to. I just set it because it is easier to remember. And for the computers that are connected to these ports, we can use another subnet like 192.168.30.0/24. And without inter-VLAN routing, if a computer is connected to this port, which is in VLAN 30, which is in this subnet, it cannot have connection to a computer to another VLAN. For example, to a computer which is in VLAN 10 and is in this subnet. If we want these computers to be able to reach each other, we can use the inter-VLAN routing. I'm going to show you how to do that on the switch. Okay, enough with the explanation. Let's go and configure the switch. I turned on the switch and connected one side of the console cable to my computer and the other side to the console port on the switch. Now I need to use a terminal emulator software. There are different options. For example, you can use PuTTY, you can use TerraTerm. The software that I'm using is Mobile Xterm. I click on New Session here, and I choose the serial. And then I choose the console cable that I connected to my computer. You can see that it shows that as COM3. You can see it here. In some softwares, you might not see the port number like COM3 three here on the software you have to find it out to do that you need to go to device manager for example here i type 
device manager. I need to go to ports here. And you can see here, it says prolific PL2303 GT USB serial COM port. And on the parentheses, it says COM3. In some softwares like Putty, you need to know this name, COM3 here. It is it might be different for you. For example, it might be COM4, COM5, COM6, something like that. Another important thing here is that the speed, which is in bits per second, by default, all the Cisco equipments use 9600. So be sure that this one is also on 9600 here. And now I click OK. When the switch is completely booted, you can see a prompt just like this. I type enable here. Now I am in a mode which is called privilege mode and I go to another mode. I type conf space terminal and I hit enter. It is called the configuration mode. Now I can change the switch name. I type host name. You can see that I hit tab and it completes the commands for me. I typed HO and hit tab key and it completed the host name command for me. Now I can rename the switch. For example, I can call it switch dash blower one. The next thing we want to do is creating some VLANs. I create VLAN 10 and name it. It is optional. For example, VLAN 10, if it is for IT department of the company, I name it IT. I type exit to exit that mode. Now I create another VLAN, VLAN 20. I can name it something else, for example, accounting and I type exit. I create the last VLAN, which was VLAN 30 and I name it something else. Naming VLANs is optional. I can create VLANs and do not name it anything. For example, I name this one server. I want to put my servers in, the, in that VLAN. Then I type end here and I come back to this mode. If I want to see the status of the ports, I can type show interface status. It shows that which ports are connected and which ports are not connected. Usually it is like this gig 101, but for me, all of them starts with two because this switch used to be in a switch stack. We're not going to talk about switch stacks here. So this was the status of the ports. If I hit a space a couple of times, I can see that I have 20 gigabit Ethernet ports and I can see also I have two 10G and two more gigabit Ethernet ports. What we wanted to do, we wanted to put the first four ports, which is 201 to 204 on VLAN 10. You can see all of them by default are here on this column. You can see all of them are in VLAN 1. Then we want to put the next four in VLAN 20 and the next four in VLAN 30. Let's do that. Now that we have created the VLANs, we can assign ports to those VLANs. I again go to the global configuration. I type interface gig 201 and I type switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10. I repeat this command for the next third port that I want to put in VLAN 10. So I hit up and down key so I can repeat previous commands. I go to interface 202 and I type the same command switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10. Then I go to port 3 203. I type the same commands switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10. And for the force port, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 3. We should do the same process for other VLANs too. For example, for 205, I want to put them in VLAN 20. I say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN. This time I change it to 20. For VLAN, for port 6, I want to put that also in VLAN 20. For port 7, I want to put that in VLAN 22, VLAN 20. And for port number 8, I put this one as VLAN 20. 
There is a simpler way to do that. For example, for the last four ports, I'm going to use another comma. I can use interface range kick 209. Then I use the dash symbol and 9 through 12. We wanted to put them, all of them, all of these four ports. Port 9, port 10, port, port 11, and port 12 in VLAN 30. Now I type the command just once and it applies to all of those ports. Switch port, mode, access, switch port, access, VLAN 30 this time. Then I hit end again. And if I type show interface status again, I can see that here the first four ports are in VLAN 10, the second four ports are in VLAN 20, and the third four ports are in VLAN 30. The other ports are still in VLAN 1. So we did assign the ports to the VLANs. Now we want to do the inter-VLAN routing. My switch is a layer 3 switch. If I type show version here, I can see the version of my switch and it shows the model of my switch. It is 3850 and it is a layer 3 switch. We can see also the model here. The last thing that we want to do is the inter -VLAN routing. Because my switch is a layer 3 switch, it can do both switching and routing. So I go to the global configuration and I want to create some interfaces, logical interfaces on my switch so they can act as the gateway for the computers. I type interface VLAN 10. These numbers should match the VLANs that we created. We created VLAN 10, 20, and 30. And on this interface, I'm going to give this interface an IP address. IP address 192.168.10.1 and the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0, which is like a slash 24. Then I type exit, then I go to interface VLAN 20 this time, and I give it an IP address 192.168.20.1. Then I go to interface VLAN 30, and I give it the IP address of 192.168.30.1. Then I type end, and to save the configuration, I type WR or write. It saves the configuration. If you do not do it, if your switch reboots, you're going to lose all the configuration that you did. And if I want to check the configuration that I did, I can type show running config. It shows the configuration. Some of them are default configuration. Some of them are the ones that I did. These were all the configuration. Let's go back. These were the interface VLANs that we created and the IP addresses that we assigned to them. And the port configuration, we can see here that we configured 12 ports. We put some of them, the first port in VLAN 10, the next ones in VLAN 20, and these four in VLAN 30. Now we can connect computers to these ports. For example, you can connect a server or a computer to port number 9 and give it an IP address in that range that we specified here, which was 192.168.30, for example, 30.10, and give it the default gateway of 30.1, which we set on the interface VLAN 30 here. You can see 30.1. And you also can have some computers in VLAN 10. You should connect them to these four ports, which are in VLAN 10, and give them IP addresses in that range, which was 192.168.10 something, for example, 10.2, 10.3, and give them the default gateway that we set here, 192.168.10.1. This way, computers that are in different VLANs, for example, the ones that are in VLAN 10 and the ones that are in VLAN 30 or 20, can communicate with each other. This switch acts as both a switch and also a router. So in this video, you saw that how we can do some basic configuration on a Cisco switch. Thank you so much for watching this video.